and welcome to the place to soar where our motto is step out and redesign and the focus is always on you I'm Anita Russell your host and this handsome gentleman right here is Ronald Ritzy as you can see we're not in the studio we're actually on location in Morristown New Jersey and I'm gonna have Ronnie very very briefly introduce himself and talk about this fantastic mural that's in the background good afternoon <laughs> my name is Ronald Ritzy and I am a Morristown resident and artist this mural was commissioned uh, by the owner of the restaurant, Monster Sushi. We also uh, enlisted a lot of the uh, students from the Marstown Neighborhood House to help construct and assemble part of this mural. And I had two apprentices that also uh, contributed to the mural, who are now are in, in their first year in the Philadelphia School of Fine Arts. Kevin Bass and Zach Thompson. They have been very proud to be a part of this project and I am very proud to have had them. So we're going to take you into Ronnie's world a little bit later on. So what we're going to do is spend some time here just sort of giving you a little bit more visual on the mural itself and then we're going to head over to his studio. So we're going to close out now. We'll see you at the studio. Bye bye. So here we, are, here we are now in the home of Ron Ritzy. His home is both um, a residence, his home is a studio, and his home is also a museum. So we're going to have the opportunity to kind of walk through and see what all of that looks like. But first I'm going to start off by reading his bio. Ron Ritzy is a celebrated self-taught artist from Morristown, New Jersey. Since his adolescence, Ron has had a passion for art as well as a desire to share it with others. Ron is a sixth of seven children after his parents moved to uh, Morristown in the early 1940s. He was always inquisitive and creative, often sketching and expressing his imagination through the medium of art. By the time he was 16, he was passionately engaged in his, in his craft. As early as then, he was honing his craft while applying diverse materials and mixed media to accentuate and embellish the art. Ron's trademark style combines relief and mixed media to create vibrant acrylic sculptures on canvas. His art has been described as bold and contemporary with a folk-like flair. His goal is to challenge the viewer to see life from more than one perspective while enjoying the beauty and complexity of the painting. While he gets inspiration from issues and events in pop culture, he also captures art that celebrates the black experience. In his leisure, Ron likes to spend time at the Castillo Theater in New York City. There he volunteers with Dr. Lenora Fulani, a developmental psychologist and co-founder of the All-Stars program Operation Conversation Cops and Kids. Ronnie is a true artist and a member of the community. So having read all that, tell us who you really are. <laughs> wow, I think you've said it all. But, uh... <laughs> I, I am just very passionate about the arts. I'm passionate about bringing it to children, introducing these uh, different techniques that I have with my art to children uh, in the community. I started off at an early age. I remember uh, having a SAM camp. A SAM that, camp? Yes, yeah, Saturday AM camp. And where the kids from the neighborhood would come and um, they would come and my father would cook hamburgers and hot dogs and I would have projects for them every Saturday. And you were how old at that age? Oh, I was, must have been about 17 years old. Oh, wow. 16, 17. 
And these kids are now have kids of their own and their kids have kids. So this summer when I was doing the mural, uh, I'm, I'm noticing some of the names of the, of the children. Oh, wow. And then the parents were saying, that's my grandkids because I had taught them at the SAM camp. So here I'm teaching grandkids now. Oh, wow. <sighs> Amazing. So, so my, uh, my art interest has spanned many years. And I'm very excited about um, sharing it many, many more years. <laughs> so can you talk a little bit about the fact that your art is such a part of your home life? I'm like totally fascinated by the fact that when I walked in your house, I'm like, I am in the Ronnie Ritzy Art Museum. So can you talk a little bit about how that all flows, your creativity flows when you're living in your art, but your art is also living within you? You never sleep. <laughs> you never sleep. You're constantly creating, and uh, it's a it's it's a balancing act for me. So I, when I leave my home, I make sure that work is drying, or and so I can come back and constantly have something on my easel. Mm. I have different stations in my apartment, which you won't see today because I had to break it down to stage it for this this interview. But what I've done is uh, basically had a lot of uh, different uh, projects working at one time and it's really uh, has been very very exciting. I'm never bored. <laughs> I'm never bored. So in, in your um, excuse me in your bio it says that you draw on events in pop culture so you can talk a little bit about how that external world kind of influences your creative world. Why? Well, that's a great question, uh, and I, I believe I can answer it. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> the, I see images. I see images that in the community, and uh, such as my immigration series. Mm -hmm. And I saw the, the, uh, the population change, like with Latinos walking in packs of, of people, like groups of people going and coming to work. So the landscape of our community changed and it kind of piqued my interest. Say, wow, these are these are immigrants looking for work mm -hmm. and uh, and they're and it's changing how we usually uh, commute to work because a lot of them are, are walking. So I started to uh, create an an immigration series with uh, Latinos. Oh nice. Oh, nice. That's very nice. So, um, one of the things that I'm really intrigued about in, in your bio is the fact that you're self-taught. So, can you describe what that self-teaching actually looked like over the decades since you've been painting? So, I'm assuming that you're still learning as well. Still learning, and other artists teach me. Yeah. Sometimes I might take a class every now and then at, at a university, or, or it's, I see a, a class being taught at a, a community. Uh, workshop and I pick up on it and it's, it's kind of interesting but being self taught to answer your question you're constantly evolving as an artist nice. so evolving in my sense means that I'm experimenting constantly I love working in the medium of sculpture acrylic sculpture where you see when you see my work it's 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 dimensional relief work mm -hmm. so I would like to bring these images forward forward for the idea of perhaps you might want to touch it but please don't touch the artwork <laughs> I understand no. totally so um, one of the other things that I kind of glean from your story is when you were talking about the Sam camp that your parents were involved so your brothers and sisters they were involved as well no just my parents, just your parents. Uh, when I presented the idea to them they said my father just immediately jumped on it and uh, since his name has come up, he has—he was the one that first bought my first paints. Oh, nice! And he was a house painter. Oh, so, nice! So uh, one day after work, he came and he says, uh, "Come with me." So he took me up to Boyne's Arts and Craft, which was a local art store in Marstown, and he had his painting clothes on, and he came in there and he says, "This is my son. He's an artist." to get what you want. So I went and I got all these nice. paints and we and I brought it home and it was just and eventually bought easels. 
So he really inspired me to do a lot of artwork. So when did you first realize that you were an artist? All my life. All my life. I used to doodle and, and dream of, of, of exhibiting and... Oh, wow. Yeah. It was always like that. And I always used to go to art museums. My parents would take me to art museums and so, so in school I always excelled in art. Um, my senior year in high school I uh, received the Artisan Award for a painting that we will, we will be seeing oh, eventually. Oh nice. Now, yes. Which painting is it? Family. Oh nice. Yes. Yeah, so your audi the audience will be able to see that once we uh, start the tour. Yes. Good, good, good. So. What else do you want to share with our audience? So, you know, I could ask you questions for days and days and days. So what are those specific things that you really want people to know and understand about Ronnie Ritzy, the artist? I'm sensitive. Mm. Okay. I'm sensitive. I, I, I look for approval. I don't believe any artist does not want that kind of validation. Mm. Uh, it's important to be encouraged. It's important to have the support of family and friends and to be recognized. Uh, it doesn't always equate to dollars and cents is yes. what makes sense yes. to me. What makes sense is me going into the school systems and working with, with children. What makes sense to me is seeing my artwork used to promote fundraisers. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that really give me the encouragement to go on and create more. So you feel really good about what you do as an artist? I feel fantastic about it. It's, uh, living, I'm living my dream, a dream of something I've always dreamed of. So my dreams have, have been realized and I'm very pleased. I'm pleased with the response I get from my community. Uh, I'll never get used to it. I'm just like a kid all the time. It's like, it's new to me. Every day I wake up and I, I walk out in the street, somebody stops me. So I'm always constantly surprised. And, and I think that, wow, maybe I just got off the boat. No, I didn't. I've been around the block a couple of times, but it's always new to me. And I hope I keep this fresh feeling. Exactly. So um, one thing that I've never had the opportunity to do is see your work. Like I've only seen it in your house. Mm -hmm. I've never had the opportunity to kind of see it when it's out on exhibit. So can you talk about some of the places where your work has been out um, on public exhibit and if you're planning to do any public exhibiting in the future? Yes, right now I'm working on an exhibit on a series again, because I work in series. Yes. And this series is a, a series on what is going on with police brutality and, and since I'm working in the theater and working with Operation Conversation Cops and Kids, this has given me the inspiration and the material I can use to devote and transfer onto canvas these, these images. So I'm constantly working on, on this piece and it should be coming out soon. And will it be local in the Morristown area, or? It, it depends. So it's a secret? It's a secret. <laughs> now, Ronnie, I want you to tell us a little bit more about your work in the community, and particularly what you do with the um, Operation Conversation Cops and Kids. I'm totally intrigued by that, and I want to know more. That work has been very fulfilling, because it's so timely and it's so needed in our community. We work out at the Castillo Theater on 42nd Street in New York City. Mm -hmm. And this is a political theater. And it's founded by Dr. Lenora Falani. What she has done is, is through the years, especially during the, uh, the incident or the murder of, of Sean Bell, mm -hmm. and she has a son of her own, and she started this program of the graduating class of NYPD. Uh, they come in and they uh, meet with children that from the All Stars program, and we have a conversation. What I my position is, 
the line producer, where I come in and I register the kids, I make sure that they have a rehearsal space, and I sit and I take notes on the actual workshops, uh, making sure that they, these kids are tracked at the time of coming into the building, to the time they're leaving home, leaving from home. And um, it's, it's been quite rewarding. And what we lead up to is different places like um, different venues, such as the New York Police Academy, which we will, I just got a notice the other day, but in March we will be having our demonstration at the New York Police Academy oh, nice. in Queens, New York. We have been to the Apollo several times, which is an amazing experience. Uh, we have been to John Jay College, okay, of uh, the College of Criminal Justice. Mm -hmm. It's been, it's just been great. So what is the All-Stars Project? The All-Stars Project is when kids are from the different inner cities, we have them in New York, they sprung up all over the country. Mm -hmm. And these are kids, they, the after-school programs where kids come oh, in, they, okay. they, they excel in the arts, they sing, and they give all sorts of programs that uh, gears towards the youth, mainly high school kids. Mm -hmm. So the Operation uh, Conversation Cops and Kids, so it basically pairs one group of people, meaning the, the police officers, and these are officers that are straight out of the academy, correct? Yes, rookie officers. Okay, mm -hmm. so it pairs them with a group of, of kids. So uh, is, is there a specific age group for the kids? Oh, high school. Oh, high school. High school. Okay, so now you're creating an environment for this dynamic conversation to occur. Yes. So what does that dynamic conversation look like? It varies. On different days, it's very intense. Uh, these uh, Demographically, the, uh, the children in New York City are much more cosmopolitan than the ones in New Jersey. Okay. So you're getting them very outspoken and they have experienced much more than they have in the suburbs, mm. so it's it's it varies how how they come off, and the police officers are new, so you're getting getting they're coming in with an open mind to make a change. So they're not hardened police officers. They want they're there because they want to be there, and it's mandatory that they take this training, uh, which is which is quite interesting because they are mandated to. Go oh, through okay. this. Go through this training, and whether they appear at our uh, end of the demonstrations, they will they will sign up for it. Oh, okay. okay. So I'm trying to imagine what this looks like. So you have these police officers just out of the police academy, talking to a group of young, and presumably a lot of them are African American mm -hmm. um, kids. Yes. Correct. So and Latino and Latino and Latino, and it's very diverse. Very diverse. Oh, excellent. A bunch of excellent. kids. Okay. Okay. That sign up for this program. So I I have this this concept that I refer to oftentimes, and it's um, standing on the edge of the coin. So if you think about a typical coin, there's a head side and there's a a, a tail side. But the way I see um, the way people interact with one another, they can look forward and they can see what's on their side of the coin. The other people can look forward and they can see what's on their side of the coin, but it's very difficult for them to cross and take a, a look at the perspective on the other side. So it sounds like that's what this is intended to do, yes. to give people the opportunity. Like I'm used to looking at it from my perspective as a police officer, being on the street, I want to go home every night, all of that. Mm -hmm. And now you ha you're looking at it um, also from the perspective of young people who, by the way, want to go home every night as well. And those so having that conversation between those two groups that in a lot of ways are at enmity with one another. So can you dig a little bit deeper and give us a sense of how that conversation evolves between those two almost opposing groups of people, actually? Well, if I could say that banter between the youth and police officers is, is real. Mm -hmm. So they actually mirror each other and they talk about experiences they've had with police officers. And a lot of times it's very negative. And the police officers, of course, are on the defense. Yes. And they come to a happy medium where they, at the end of these workshops, they shake each other's hands and mirror what each 
person had said. And um, it's, it seems to create a bridge between the two, uh, police officers and the youth. So there is a psychological, mm -hmm. uh, uh, shall I say, some psychological solace to, the, to all of this. Yes, yes. And um, Dr. Falani has her program down. It sounds like it. Yeah, it yes. says. So there are facilitators that come in and they ask questions. Uh, who facilitate with the with the police officers and the kids, and it's it's every time I leave there, I am full. I'm totally full because yes. I know that I have done something, even if it's just line producing. I have contributed to an ill that is going on in this society right now, and it's it's not it's not the answer, but it's it's definitely bringing up a lot of questions. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So do you guys, um, with that, that program, is there a component where you follow up with people who have participated in the, in the program to really kind of get a sense, particularly with the officers, when they're out and about, what is the impact of that program on them in terms of how they're now policing in the streets? I, I haven't followed up on the aspect of the police officers policing, but there's been situations where the uh, the youth that have mm -hmm. been in there they they're knowing how to conduct themselves when, oh, when, okay. when yes, situations. Yes. I I heard this, an incident that happened where they were stopped, and it was stopped by one of the police officers that had gotten in, that had went through the training. Oh, okay. And they, these these two officer and the child recognized each other, and so it, it quelled the whole situation. Oh, wow. Okay. We get a lot, there's a lot of incidences that happen in the city, like kids that jump the turnstile. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You know, kids do stuff like that. They, <laughs> but they do get caught too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they have to answer to it. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, I, being as a line producer, what I have done is, um, and what they ask me to do is at the end of each workshop, ask kids do they need uh, a Metro card. Ah, which I thought that was really yeah, great, yeah, even yeah. though they might have it, but it's it's always good to yeah. know. So I was had the privilege of handing out Metro cards at the end of the workshops. And so I see that they are helping make these situations a lot more easier for the youth. Okay. So I hear you talk a lot about um, the workshop and the demonstration. So can you distinguish the two a little bit? Oh, certainly. The workshops are workshops where we come in and we just we sit each kid one after the other. Mm -hmm. Every other police officer, kid, police officer, kid. Okay. And the facilitators stands outside of the circle and they present them with questions. And uh, there are questions that are, that are usually uh, rehearsed. Okay, they're rehearsed and they're, they're thought out. And, but they seem to be very uh, consistent in what this um, modal is. Mm -hmm. So, so that's the workshop. What does the demonstration look the, like? The demonstration is the same that Dr. Falani usually facilitates the the, um, the demonstrations, and these are the demonstrations on stage. And it's, so, on stage, there's an audience. Yes. Oh, okay. And we invite the whole graduating class of NYPD. Oh, wow. And we're. It, if you're in these audiences, it's civilians, police officers, civilian police, every other row. And it's a, a sea full of blue police officers and graduating class and, and, and they're on stage and it's actually oh, a wow. performance. Oh, wow. It's actually a performance with directors and they teach them how to talk into a mic, how to share a conversation. Oh, wow. So there is, a, there is a direction to it, but believe me, it's very organic. It's very real. It's nothing is actually rehearsed. They, mm -hmm. they tell these uh, students and kids to come from the, come from the heart. And, it's, and it, come, it comes off very real. That's why the program is such a, such a success. Excellent. Ronnie, I really want to thank you for taking some time out and, and just opening up and having this wonderful conversation about who you are as an artist and about what, you, what it is you do in the community. So I want well, to thank you for that. You're very welcome. Good. Thank you for having me. 
So here we are back at Monster Sushi, the site of the mural, and we're here with Tim Darty, who happens to be the mayor of Morristown, and he's going to say a few words about his dear friend, Ronald Ritzy. What better place to be than Monster Sushi on a Saturday afternoon talking to Ron Ritzy? When people talk about Ron Ritzy in, in Morristown, the first thing that comes to your mind is artist. And if you go out that door and turn right, and then turn right again, you'll see an amazing mural that Ron has done for our town and for Monster Sushi. And what it really did was start a conversation uh, town-wide about murals in Morristown. Uh, and now is the forefront of a lot of areas we're talking about murals on a, on a regular basis. Morristown has become very focused on the arts. And when we have people like Ron Ritzy who lives here, it, it benefits the community immensely. Ron is one of the most talented artists I've ever seen, I've ever met. I've known him from over a decade and I've seen his work, as you can see right outside on the wall of Monster Sushi. Uh, we're so happy and privileged to have him here in our community, and he brings so much to the art world here as we continue to grow Morristown as the center for the arts for Morris County. We can only thank him uh, time and time again for what he does for our community, and we're so happy uh, that we're connected, and we continue to move Morristown forward with the arts. Excellent, excellent. So, Ronnie, I just wanted to thank you so, so much for opening up your home and showing us your art and your museum and, and all of that and allowing us to come into your community. So, would you like to say goodbye to our audience? Thank you for having me here and those are such kind words. You know how you can really see, Ron, if you come down and, and, and I call him Ron Ritzy, so if I'm driving by, I just yell out the window, Ron Ritzy, and he, and he turns around. You'll see him driving a bicycle, riding a bicycle. And he's known for that in Morristown. So uh, for people who live here and are engaged in our community, which Ron knows is very important to me and for so many people here, uh, that we are a community um, of togetherness. Uh, Ron is, is a key uh, active artist in our community, and we hope we see more of his murals throughout our town uh, and stay engaged in, in the art community and bring these young artists uh, up and, and uh, show them the way um, because he is extremely talented and we look forward to more of his work here at Morristown. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. So you right heard it right here at the place to soar. So my final words of wisdom are do more to soar in 2017. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.